Okay, so today we're going to talk about fractional exponents. So let's take a look at the first uh, one and try this. Uh, it says to simplify the square root of 9. So we should all know that the square root of 9 is actually equal to 3. All right, so now what I want you guys to do is to use your calculator. So if you don't have it in front of you, get it in front of you. And uh, I want you to type into your calculator 9 to the 1 half power. So do 9 carat key and then type in 1 half and hit equals and you should also get three. So there is a relationship between these two. It's hard to see, so let's take a look at three and four and see if we could come up with a relationship. All right, so the square root of 64. So the square root of 64 we all know is eight. Now what I want you to do is to type in your calculator four raised to the three halves power. So type that in your calculator. And four raised to the three halves power is actually equal to eight. Okay, so let's see what the relationship is here. All right, so take a look at uh, one and two. So the square root of nine is three and nine to the one half power is also equal to three. Now look at the square root of nine. The square root of nine, remember when we talked about radicals that when you have a square root, there's this number that's on the inside of that check mark that's called the index. And when we have a square root, it's actually the number two, but we don't actually write the number two down. Okay, but it is the number two. Um, now, nine has an exponent. Every number has an exponent. If there's no exponent written, it's actually one. So these are the same because this exponent of a one is this exponent right there in the numerator. And this index is the denominator of the numerator of the fraction in number two. All right, so take a look at three and four here. Okay. So, sorry. So three and four here. So another way I could write the square root of 64 is I could write this as the square root of four to the third power, because four to the third power is 64. And since it's a square root, then my index here is two. So I have an exponent here of three, just like this numerator here is a three, and my index is a two, which is the same as my denominator of the fraction in number four. So that's four to the three halves power, and I have the square root of four to the third power. So this is actually always true. When you have a fraction that's your exponent the number that's in the numerator is your power okay like this guy here and the number that's in the denominator is always your root it's what's in your check mark okay so let's write that down that rule let me just move everything up not really sure why when I did this this time I have these red marks see these red marks going I don't know if you see it but I it's on mine these red marks that go along here I'm not really sure why they're there all right, so let's take a look at this rule here. So for fractional exponents. Okay, so when I have x raised to the a over b power, a, the number that's in the numerator, that's my power, and the number that's in the denominator, that's my root. Now this is true when your x is greater than zero. And the reason why it can't be equal to zero is because, the reason why it can't be equal to zero is because if it is equal to zero, then the whole answer is zero because zero to any power is going to be zero. And this is only true when A and B, these numbers here, your A and your B have to be counting numbers, which means they can't be zero and they cannot be negative numbers. This is not true, okay? I'll show you what to do when you have a negative number up there. All right, so therefore, so let's take a look down here. Therefore, when you have x raised to the a over b power, that is equal to a is my power, so it's x to the a power, and b is my root. So it would be the b root of x to the a power. All right, so now what we need to be able to do is make sure that we could go back and forth writing things in radical form and out of radical form. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. 25 to the 1 half power. 
that's equivalent to my power, that's my power, and the bottom, the denominator, is my root. So it would be 25 to the first power and the square root of that. So it's the square root of 25. All right, 16 to the two-thirds power. So it's power over the root. So it's the cube root of 16 squared. And let's take a look at number three here. Now this is gonna be a little tricky because it's negative 125 raised to the one-third power. So my answer is actually negative the cube root of 125. So now why is the negative on the outside and why is it not on the inside? Is because when you have a negative number, it's really negative one times. 125 raised to the one-third power. So it's only 125 that's raised to the one-third power, not the negative. To get the negative underneath, you would have it would have to be written like this. Parentheses, negative 125 raised to the one-third power. Then that would be equal to the cube root of negative 125 and the negative underneath the radical. Okay, so hopefully you see the difference. Okay, it's only the 125 that's raised to one-third, not the negative. In order for the whole thing, you need to have parentheses. Okay, so let's take a look at four here. All right, so I have AB raised to the one-fourth power. Now, what's the only thing that's being raised to the one-fourth power? It's only B that's being raised to the one-fourth power because A has an exponent. A has an exponent of one if there's no exponent written. And there's no parentheses around it to represent the whole thing. So it's A, the fourth root of B to the first power. Okay, so in order... In order for the whole thing to get underneath the radical, you'd have to have this, a, b, in parentheses, raised to the one-fourth power. Then that would be the fourth root of a, b, okay? All right, let's take a look at five. I have two x to the two-fifths power. The only thing that's being raised to the two-fifths is uh, the x, and I'm just going to move this stuff along here. So the only thing that's being raised to the two-fifths power is x. So the two is on the outside. So it's two, the fifth root of x squared. Now take a look at six. Now six, I have parentheses around the two x to the two-fifths power. So that's actually going to be the fifth root. Let me write it right below it and I don't have enough room. The fifth root of two x to the second power. Okay, so notice how I wrote that. I wrote it as 2x to the second power, and the 2x is in parentheses. If you write it like this, the fifth root of 2x squared, then you're not squaring the 2. You're only squaring the x. Because then this is really the fifth root of 4x squared, because 2 squared is 4. Okay, so let's take a look at now writing it the other way. I'm going from exponential form to fractional form. All right, so remember, this is your power, and the number in your check mark is your root. So it'd be 6 raised to the 3 fourths power, power over the root. So remember, when there's no number written in that check mark, that's really a 2. So this would be 5 raised to the 3 halves power. And number 3, be 3a Three, the square root of 3a. So now notice the whole thing is underneath the radical. So it's 3a raised to what's my power is 1. My root is 2. So it's 3a raised to the 1 half power. And you have to have parentheses. You can't write this. 3a to the 1 half power. Because then you're just saying the uh, a is the only thing that's underneath the radical. Okay, so let's take a look at 4. I have 2 the fifth root of b. So notice where the 2 is. The 2 is not underneath the radical. So we will not get a power. So it would be 2b raised to the one-fifth power. So only the b is under the radical. So that's the only one that gets to the one-fifth power. And let's take a look at 5. I have x the third root of y to the fourth power. Only y to the fourth is under the radical. So it's xy raised to the four-thirds power. Okay, so that's it, and uh, we'll do some more in class tomorrow. Have a good night.